sa Guinea. Supporting my career for almost 40 years now. I'm glad I have a chance to do this one. together 
is the best gift that we've been given, and it's the gift of music because it allows us not just to reach out to you guys. And even if we did, if you didn't allow us to reach in, it goes nowhere. So, I, least I thought, we thought, if we were going to do the music and we're going to give it to people who've been supporting me for the longest time, why don't we give it to them in the most original way? Making it sound like when it first came out. Ito, sample.
in the 80s, someone came up with me by the name of Maya Mirialis and gave me her demo in a cappella on a cassette. Ma 
the way you reacted, that's exactly what was going on inside. Because she was part of a band called Music and Magic. So when she walked up to me, she had just performed herself. And I was not used to seeing female artists come up to me fully made up, asking me, do you have a manager? And so when I looked, oh, I had to respond accordingly, oh no. <laughs> No, but she, she said, would you want to come and sing? And then just, you know, like, not audition, but in a way it was. But I want my manager to see you. She was managed then. The band, Music and Magic, was managed by Sandra Chavez, who later on became the managers of, the manager of Shaja Padilla, yours truly, and even Sharon Coneta. So I said, sure. And she said, okay, so what, what song would you want to do? And I just felt, you know, I probably will never have the chance to do this song again. Can I do this one? And the rest, sisterly. Sandra became my manager, and the ball just started rolling after that. So. Nice, well, we 
with, with backup singers. And for me, that kind of puts, it, it puts them in a different level. But they are singers first. So they can come up with a concert all on their own. In fact, one of them already has an album out. And that's Nessa Rica over there. And the other is one that you may or may not have seen before in the concerts of others, including TV shows like Showtime. She's always there doing what she does. And I know the only reason why she does it is because she's always in demand from people like me. Give it up for LK Saison Cortez. I'm gonna miss this group that you're seeing up here, especially this guy over here. There's a reason why his hair is now salt and pepper. It's because he works with me. The stress. But he's been, we've been working together for almost, almost, no? like since 1990. He is my, let me count, okay? He's my musical director. He's my musical arranger. He's my vocal director. He's my vocal arranger. He's all of the above. And he's a dear brother, huh? And the makeup artist, once in a while. And then choreography. He, he gave it all to me, there's nothing left. So you can't ask him to do a sample for you tonight, no. But this man has really been an inspiration to work with. And um, if I should come back to New York, let's say 10 more times before this all ends, I want, to, I want him to be a part of it. It's called Faustino. All ages are here tonight. Now, this one you heard her earlier, and I thought it would be great to have her back here on stage. You cannot imagine what it's like now to be not known as like she is the daughter of Gary Valenciano, but there was a funny tweet that I saw the, just yesterday. She was laughing because she said, Dad, look at this. It was, I went to see the concert of this artist's dad. <laughs> but to move to her music. That's the best news that that like me can have. So allow me to break out here on this stage and to just present to you our way of performing together. Piano V! Yes, I'm right. Let's go!
so fun. I know. I'm so crazy. mad at him because I wanted him to do that and play percussions on the actual track. When he's like, no, I'm shy. But no, really, I just have to be honest. I have to be honest with you. I was, I'm shy. So <laughs> You want to tell them about this next one I'm going to do? Just a little bit. Okay, this next song. Um, he always says it's hard for him to sing, or he's scared to sing this song because the writer is in the room. Well, yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, by the way, before I... And also, he always asks me to tell the story, but he tells the story so much better. So I'm just gonna pretend I'm part of the song. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you are part of the song now, okay? No, um, it was like, wow, how many years ago? Before you were born, actually, when I wrote this song. And it was originally done in English. And I was so inspired when I saw this young actress who had suffered through life at such a young age that uh, the picture of her, of the late and great Fernando Bo Jr. in the hospital as he was like this beside her bed. She ended up going up to heaven to, to I think it was anorexia or something like that. Her name is Julie Vega. I mean, a, a, I was never even that close to her, but she had such an impact on the entire, the, I mean, the Philippine audience. And uh, so I wrote this song. Until one day, the uh, recording company came up to me and Yuna said, uh, can you write a song, uh, like a ballad in Tagalog? You have Tina Natuto, Paano, yeah, those were okay, but we want something that's yours. And I could never, for the life of me, write in Tagalog. So there was this lady that came up and said, yeah, you know, if you give me the song, maybe I can, you know, do something with it. And I said, no, you cannot. It's about somebody passing on. And how can you, I can't, I can't stand on stage and keep doing that and bringing people into that mood. So she said, no, but what if I just get it and I just do a whole rewrite to it? I said, okay. Besides, I promised among the parents of Julie that I would never release the English version for a commercial. That she did. It was Angeli who got the song and wrote the lyrics to this next song. The version of this song, this one, was done originally with Kyla, another incredible singer from home. This one brings it closer to the heart because now it's me and my daughter singing it in front of the writer who happens to be her mom. My mom. So, uh, New York, hope you enjoy this one.
stage, but isn't that something that links all of us together? Now, I don't know how many of you here are married to, I can have to, I'm sorry, I have to be very honest here, but how many of you are married to Filipinas? <laughs> Filipino women, yeah! <laughs> all right, that's good. I see a lot of encouraging voices there, but you must admit that there is something about the Filipina being so... Yeah. Yeah. That's it, that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. No, the Filipina seems to be so... I'm gonna try and say this with the nicest face. So, so dramatic. No, you know what I'm saying? No, but let me say it, okay? Because I can also ask how many of you are married to Filipinos? I'm dramatic too. My wife can testify, her testimony will last longer than this concert about how dramatic I, can, I am. And I think, friends, I think it's because also it has a lot to do with who we are, the history. Look at our history, there's so much drama. I mean, this year alone, elections alone. Oh, the drama is finished, I'm just using that as an example. Honey? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, but that's really what it is. In fact, I think even the young ones here can testify that when your parents get home, what's the first thing they do after they give you? Uh, hi, hi. Or if it's the mom, hi, uh, oh, sige, sandali lang, anak. Television is on, TFC, and you're watching the latest soap opera. <laughs> do you know what the story is? You don't. You're washing the dishes that you're watching and you're looking at all the, oh, It's drama. It's a part of who we are. And I think in a way, maybe that's why the Filipino is so giving. That when a disaster happens in, let's say, Leyte or in Ormoc, even if you're from Ilocos, you will give. 
because you know that the drama that people are going through is, is something you've gone through or something you just understand. And so that's why the Filipino is hospitable. Many of the uh, frontliners who are here, the job that you've done, acknowledge even in, in Great Britain of how incredible you guys are. So anyway, okay, just in case some of you might go, it's not, it's not the Filipinos that we watch on TV, it's the K-drama. <laughs> it's, the, it's the biggest thing. But with all of these uh, soap operas, or the teleserie, or K-novela, there's always a song that goes with it. And the songs usually stand for the shows that we follow. But with the Pinoy, it's different. Eh? Because of the drama, the songs that are used in all of these shows are not just songs, but they are theme songs. Not of what they've watched or what we've watched, but many times it's theme songs of what we've actually gone through. I need to share this. I didn't share this in all the places I went to. But after my challenge with my, my bypass, and two weeks later they found out I had cancer in my kidney and I had to go in to be operated. It was a whole thing that happened in 2018. Yeah. And then I came to New York in 2019. That was like, I'm back kind of thing. I remember there was this guy by the name of Coco Martin. Oh, you see, I mentioned his name last. That's it. There was a guy by the name of Coco Martin. Next song, please. No, he came, he came to the house. And Coco Martin, my family, they don't watch you know, all of these things. But they know of him because he was the favorite of my mom. And he came to visit me. At the same time, my mom was in Manila. So he comes in. Oh, Sir Gary. You missed the book of you, Sir Gary. Alam mo kayo po ang buenas namin sa ang probinsyano eh. In English. Oh, Sir Gary. Uh, you're my... Anong buenas? Luck. You're, you're the lucky charm. You're the lucky charm of our show. Ang probinsyano. And he said, Sir, we, we'd like you to, to come up with a new theme song for the show. And I had to be honest with him and tell him, Coco, it's been years since I've been inspired to write a song. And he says, no, you don't understand. We don't want you to write a song about the show. But we know that the show is able to address the drama that people are facing today in the real world. Can you write a song about what you went through? And maybe the song can become a theme song for people who are going through the difficulties in life today. I've done many, many theme songs. As in, countless. But there are two that really stick out. Now, some of you may not understand the lyrics, but if you feel it in your heart, you're probably catching what the song is already saying. And these are the two songs that came from Ang Provincia. So, allow me now, especially for those of you who are way at the top, sana, somehow, these songs just Go! 
walang sagot Nasasaktan Hindi na lamang dahilan Ang nakabibingin bulong Matatakot Di maintindihan Nang sukat ang puso Disipan Mata Sasagot sa dalangin New York Huwag kang matakot Huwag mapahala Kung bumuhos ang ulan Ang umang pagsubok May dahilan Minsan walang kasa So tonight, I was wondering if I could try and bring you back to that time in the 80s when it was like that. So for all the ladies, I ask for all the men, if you know this act, you know, you can join me. Come on now, one time to go.
Okay. We we'll take a time out. Now, okay. Because, yeah, alam niya. Oh, a time out doesn't mean it's the end of the show. But every show has made me feel so good. So yeah, take your seat. At least now I know that you guys can actually get up on your feet. I get scared. Eh? You know, Jelly keeps telling me, and Gani, when you started out, your fans were like from 25 to 45. So how old are they now? So they come to the concerts, oh, we're, we're Gani B. We want you Gani B, huh? But it's great! I think I'm gonna keep doing this until this heart stops beating.
Jay Eigenman Rogoff, who is my sound engineer, who is from New York. Anthony Abrilia, who is my lighting engineer, lives out all the way in Las Vegas. And Nelson Dorado, my monitor engineer. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> Next time again, okay? I did mention my brothers who are here, Juan, Javi, and Andy Ortiz and their families. My sister, Gabin Raider, is here also with her beautiful daughter, Mia. My, my dear cousin, Creamy Mendez is Creamy here. Creamy. Hi, Creamy. Thank you. You were here the last time too, right? No? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I'm glad you're here. No, Creamy, I really thought you were here. Is Fernando was here? Yes, Fernando was here. And her son, Nooch? Noah. Noah. Okay, who wrote this? It's N-O-O-C-H. I have to look twice. It's Nooch. But it's nice. Noah, Nooch. You know how Filipinos are. Right? Your name is Frederico and you end up with Bob. So Noah. Noah, hope you're enjoying. Thanks. Nair and Anthony Martinez and family. Thank you so much. Okay, I forgot to mention one thing on November 5. If you're if you like, if you miss seeing local talents from the Philippines, November 5, the entire ASAP Nakito staff, staff, yeah, we're part of the staff, but the entire family is going to Las Vegas. We're going to be at the Orleans Theater on November 5, so we'll see each other there. And here's the last thing I wanted to say. Um, recently, I, was, I became part of a group called Pray.com. I don't know how many of you have that app. But it's a prayer app, okay? And in today's world, <laughs> I think it's really what we need. But what they wanted me to do was they wanted me to create content for people to hear, not to watch. Content, not to sing, but to do it in the form of stories. And it's amazing how the story they wanted me to read was the story of Joseph. And not only am I, do I play Joseph, but I play every other character in the story of Joseph. <laughs> I voice it. So you have Jacob. Oh son, come in. You've outgrown your old coat. Your mother has prepared this for you. All the way to the butler in jail. I had a dream. I do not understand the dream. Tell me the dream. To Pharaoh. You are a Hebrew spy. If your interpretation of my dreams does not satisfy my anguishing soul, Joseph, it will be your head. Serious, no? Because it's the actual story of Joseph. And it's on Pray.com. So you can check it out. My voice is all stretched, so it's kind of hard for me to dig deep and get that deep voice and stuff. And if you are really old school, there are CDs available on <laughs> Only the CDs, no CD player. Just the CDs out there. And hopefully we can print them on, on, on vinyl, you know, soon. So for those of you who are back into that, it will also be available. All right, this is the scariest part of the show because uh, I did this the last time I was here. And even if it's difficult to do, I need to do this because I know in a two and a half hour or two hour show, we can't squeeze in all the songs. Okay, but if I was to ask you now, if there was a song of mine you'd want me to sing, what would that song be? <laughs> wait, wait, I'm not finished. Wait, 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 patience. Just make sure it is my song, huh? I said, when we were in, I think it was uh, Seattle, first concert of the tour. Okay, you know my songs? Yes, I do. What's this? What's your request? Be my lady. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But because I love you guys, I love the audience in, well, just for your information, Be My Lady is not mine. It belongs to Martin Yadera. And she was so proud. But, yes, I know your songs because I love you. Be my lady. 
But let me divide, uh, let me see if I can divide all of you here, like this group is one, this is another group, and let's make the third group up there. Do not go on your phone and check Google to see what my songs are, please. Just whatever comes to mind. If you know it's my song, then what would it be? Let's start with this group here. Oh, wait, if I, wait, 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 wait. If I look at you and I go like this, that means we haven't done it yet. We will do it. Any requests? Okay, I'll give you, uh, wait, wait. Some of you are like, what? What song? I don't know. Oh, that's so Filipino. I don't know. Oh, here's a sample. Here's a sample. At a sample. And I love this song because I'll never forget from the words, from the words of none other than Jose Marichan. He came up to me and said, Whenever I see this No, no he didn't say that. <laughs> Wait, I love that guy. Huh? But he spoke to me one time and he said, You know, Gabby, the thing about music is that no matter where you're from, it is the language of the soul. Yeah. So can I? Tickle the soul of yours now with this song. Total, I think it's timely for me to do this. New York. Pasko na. Oh, oh, oh. 
ngiti mga matay nagmimingming ngunit ngayon It's a very good friend of mine that I call the Zen Drum. That's right. The Zen. The Zen Drum. And it's funny because people often ask me, what in the world were you playing? The Zen Drum. And what I do is I program it in such a way that I can get any sound out of any of these triggers. So I can get something like this. And if my performance is bad, who cares? I can clap for myself. Thank you. Or I can do something like... Or if I want, I can even play a beat like, uh, for example, something like... So I said, eh, wala na si Yeng Constantino. But maybe I can still use this with a request that comes from me. And for those of you who know this song, can you sing with me? Because I have a feeling many of you, both young and old, will know this one. I'll give you a clue of what the song is. Tell me if you recognize this sound. Ang <laughs> galing! A drum! Of course it's a drum! How about this sound? You might know it. Oh, how about this one? That's, you know it? Uh, okay, thank you. But just to let you know how it sounded, how I used this, let's see, uh, let's see. This is how it originally was used when Yang was with us. Wait, uh, I'll just fix this lamp a bit. Ooh, you know what? You know why I'm talking a lot? 
because we're only actually given two and a half hours. And the thing is, because Yang is not here, I can talk more. <laughs> All right. This is how that song went that I did with Yang. It goes something like this.
tonight I am thrilled that I have a world-class violinist who is here tonight. Sir Ronnie Rogoff, where are you, sir? Are you here? Where are you? Is he here? Well, he's somewhere here, but I'm so thrilled that he is actually here. Uh, and I am thrilled to actually do this next one. Now, I know uh, some of you are wondering, you know, how do, how do I do what I do up here on stage? It's so good that I've seen some of you smile and some of you cry and some of you get up on your feet. So I thought since tonight is a night of inspiration, I thought of what if I just, you know, put these songs together. Songs that I wrote that boldly spoke about, that boldly speaks about the God who has kept me alive through so many years. I just want to take this chance to thank you for my being able to come back to New York to get people all the other time.
a lot younger. Uh, uh, it was already difficult for me to do what I do. What more at my tender age. But I am never ashamed to tell people how old I am. Because what you're seeing up here is not me. The legs and the power that I get, I mean it's not like what the young people do today where they're moving from beginning to end. It's a totally different way of expressing music now or dance now. Mine is just how I've always known it to be. And that's why I'm bold when I step up on stage and I just give glory to God. And besides, it's still always been so much fun to do this. Because there's always, it's, it, there's this thing that manages to, to, to generate that one last push that says, it's all right, Gary. I got you back. And I'm with you from way before you planned this concert. Till way after it's done. Saka, dignan mo naman sila. Parang gusto pa yata nilang humataw. So, 
say, Lord, if it's possible, Lord, can I just know how I'm doing with regard to my sugar level? <laughs> oh, it looks good. Besides, I know that there are a lot of uh, frontliners here, so I'm pretty safe. <laughs> oh, yes, Okay, uh, I will just make sure, huh? And say, I don't know how much I'm going to give for this next song. <laughs> but I think, like I said earlier, for as long as God says, keep on going, I shall. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to do everything I can his grace to stand up on this stage tonight before we go I'm hoping lahat tayo ay sabay sabay humataw
I'm still on the stage, so I guess I'm not leaving yet, huh? But, uh, this concert may only be part one of, uh, of part two. <laughs> uh, please don't leave yet. And if you do, if you do want to leave, honestly, can you move slowly? So that you can hear the message of this next song. Because I don't want to end this with this memory of, wow, he can still move. Seriously, my concert for 2020 was supposed to be called Pure Energy, dot, 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 one last time. No! But the pandemic happened and everything changed for me. And with the help of amazing people, I realized I'm not the one who moves people. He is. So, I want to end this night by giving you some word of encouragement. New York, you might have, you can sit if you want. This, this won't take long, okay? But I know you're gonna have to walk to your cars or walk to, around the corner and you need your rest, children. But, uh, I, we don't usually end concerts in this way. But uh, to those who have been dreaming and who might have been clipped uh, due to so many things that have occurred in the past, in the recent past, please, I wrote this song in 1986. And only because of the pandemic, the song reached people around the world. Uh, This was a great evening. As crazy as it is, it's been quite intimate also just to be with you this way. You know, New York, the reason why this night means a lot is because the last time I was here, I had to leave in the next day because I had to be with my mom as she passed away a few days after. Yeah, tonight, uh, what's great is that my family came from from she don't forgive me but you know how it is you know, when you see family members come you go home to Manila for Christmas Christmas is different there as it is here but when family comes together it does something to you and I believe God used this my brothers and my sisters being here and my, my nephews and my nieces and my cousins, their they're, they're being here has really been energizing for me. So,
friends in the audience, Vito Villarreal, a dear friend, and a best friend of mine from grade 5 pa. Right, grade 5, grade 6, grade 7 in Lasal Green Hills. And since then, it's only now that I'm seeing him. Alan Chu, Jose. Thank you, bro, for being here.
Touch all those, all who seem so far 